1974, there was a UFO crash in Kuyami, which exploded the world. Everyone heard about it, but no one knew anything about it as it was very, very quickly hushed up by the Mexican, US and many other governments who wanted to sweep it under the carpet like they do everything else. And no one's really spoken about it since. There's not much information about it on the internet. There's a, There was a book made about it, but no one really spoke about it. That was until a Mexican official whose main role is UFO disclosure, Jesus Alberto, claims that they are in possession of a video regarding a US retrieval program of the Kuyami UFO crash, but he later removed the tweet from public view. This is a hugely speculative video, of course, but it, th there's, there's fuel to this fire. So we're gonna dig into it, but first of all, we need a bit of cons, um, bit of backstory, sorry, regarding this UFO encounter. So back in 1974, Mexico, to be specific, in the state of Chihuahua, Chihuahua. I've definitely butchered that. I've got it wrong. But an unidentified flying object collided with a small plane. Both the US government and Mexican government responded to the crash. The series of events that followed would stay buried until the early 2000s when Mexico became a hotspot for UFO sightings and investigators flocked there uncovering even more bizarre stories. So like I said, this crash happened in 1974. The US and Mexican governments come together, they deal with the situation, and then nothing, silence, brushed under the carpet until the 2000s, and now more recently, until yesterday at the time recorded when this tweet was published and then quickly removed. So, in Cuyami, Mexico, 1974, in the state of Chihuahua, I think that's right, an unidentified flying object collided, we've kind of gone over this. On August 25th, a small plane lifted off from El Paso, Texas, heading over Mexico City, or heading towards Mexico City. While the small civilian plane continued on its heading, US air defense radar was tracking a UFO heading over the Gulf of Mexico towards Corpus Christi, Texas. This was an, uh, approximately 10.07 p.m., traveling faster than 2,000 miles per hour. The authorities assumed it was a meteor, but that changed when the object suddenly changed course. The object slowed and descended with new heading towards Kuyami, a peaceful desert town of about 40 miles south of the US border, with a population of only around two and a half thousand people. And eventually, the object disappeared from radar screens. Nearly an hour later, a civilian radio station announced that an aircraft had crashed near Koyami. And then this is the flight path of the UFO. So you've got this white dotted line where it's coming to in. This is going 2,000 miles an hour, and they assume that this is a meteor. And then it suddenly pings this direction, and then again, things in this direction, and this was the impact site. The next morning, Mexican authorities began a search and recovery of the downed civilian plane. Approximately at 10.35 a.m., Mexican recovery teams spotted the wreckage from the air. Mexican authorities then announced another crash site just a few miles away. Moments later, the authorities issued a radio silence on the surge. U.S. authorities offered assistance to help clean up and recover. Um, the offer was declined. Despite the refusal, Fort Bliss on the American side of the border, Nil El Paso, uh, was assembling a recovery team and continued to monitor Mexican recover um, efforts via air surveillance. These events and those that follow were pieced together um, by researchers No Torres and Ruben Uriarte in their book, Mexico's Roswell. Torres and Uriarte, I think that's right, had as their primary source of mysterious documents titled Deneb Report, which was anonymously sent to UFO researchers in the 1990s. Other sources include eyewitness accounts from local residents who saw the mid-air collision. The authors also received an anonymous post on their Wikipedia page, giving the names of several uh, serial numbers of some Mexican soldiers from the US officials allegedly involved in the incident. The authors are in process of following up on the leads, which they say have proved promising thus far, though they are unwilling to release the names just yet uh, during a podcast UFO interview in June. According to these sources, the Mexican recovery team loaded both crash remnants into flatbed trucks and began heading south. US authorities ordered a lower altitude uh, flyby and they saw the convoy eerily had 
stopped. The flyby reported that all jeeps and trucks were stopped and two of the bodies appeared to be laying on the ground. It was decided that the standing, uh, standing by recovery team would move in and take charge of the UFO despite the Mexican refusal, refusal for assistance. When American forces arrived on the scene around 4pm on August 26th, donning biohazard suits, they beheld a grisly sight. All of the Mexican recovery team members were apparently dead and sitting on the back of the flatbed trucks um, was a metallic saucer craft of uh, craft the color of polished steel around 16 feet across with no markings. According to Torres and Uriarte, uh, the cause of death was unknown and the recovery team probably had little to no time to investigate. Furthermore, if the cause of the soldiers' deaths was in fact biological, then returning with bod uh, with a body for investigation would be dangerous. So that's kind of the crux of the entire thing that went on. But you can see this was a very deep story and it's kind of, you know, it is very much so Mexico's Roswell because of how covered up it's been, how hush hush it's been, how, you know, everyone's just kind of swept this under the carpet. So if you go on to UFO sightings in Mexico on Wikipedia, you can see that in 1974, this is one of the most official um, sightings according to UFOologists. Local residents reported a mid-air collision between a UFO and a small plane near the town of Koyami on the 20 August 25th 1974 followed by a military investigation and cover-up. However historians say that such UFO reports are likely prompted by the 1974 crash and the military recovery of the of a Kesna, Cessna aircraft involved in drug trafficking. So that's the that was the, the alibi that the, the government gave and this was such a big story that it was turned into a book obviously you know it was referenced in the first article that we read and it was it's going on amazon for nine nine pound 55 if anyone's interested uh the koyame incident ufo crash near presidio uh presidio texas so this is obviously a follow-up to the widely successful book Mexico's Roswell, which was the first book. So this goes into a little bit more detail. Now, let's fast forward to now. You know, up until this point, this has just been another one of those, oh, the government doesn't want to talk about it incidents. Well, a Mexican official, like I've said before, who goes, um, you know, Jesus Alberto was his name. He claims that he is in possession of a video that proves this UFO recovery and cover up. So the tweet, you can see at the top of the tweet here it is um, written in Spanish it was uh, translated by Google and it stated I have the vid at your time it's a ship from another world that was this tweet and it was very very quickly removed why we don't know why was this posted in the first place this incident was always 50 years ago. In fact, it was 50 years ago. Is there some kind of declassification going on with this incident where, you know, we are going through this period of soft disclosure, as people like to say. Is this a part of that soft disclosure? Are we kind of finally getting, you know, this information gently released to us? Is this, again, a period of declassification, as I said before? I don't actually know 100%. I don't know what the reason for this tweet was. I don't know the reason for it being removed. All I have is speculation. So that obviously leaves us again with just speculation. First of all, the incident was very, it was witnessed by many people. It was very, you know, there was two kind of governments on pulling at the, pulling at the craft, if you will, kind of what, you know, the Americans wanted it. You know, they wanted to help with the recovery, but really they wanted it. And the Mexican government clearly wanted it because they were like, no, we don't want you. We got this. So it's, it's interesting and I'm intrigued to see how this plays out if it plays out because this is either a Freudian slip wasn't meant to happen or well I've got, I got, I got no or really I've got no or for you so you know looking at the comment the top comment is what is the point of his tweet to tell us that we uh, he has a video which will certainly bring the heat down on him and make it impossible for us to show you know exactly anyway what do you guys make of this did you know about the uh, the Koyame UFO crash in the first I know I'm going to get butchered in the comments for uh, literally um, like butchering all of that but I'm sorry anyway what do you guys make of it? Have you heard about this incident before? You know, do you know anything about this incident that I don't? I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions um, on all of this down below. What do you make of this cryptic tweet? Do you think it um, there's more substance to this than we know? Do you think someone told him to take the tweet down, Men in Black style Or do you think it's kind of just a, a nothing sandwich? Let me know your thoughts. Wait now there, be sure to jump together, head out that like button, subscribe if you're new and to go a little bit so you get notified whenever we upload. And until next time, guys, I hope that you have enjoyed. Cannot wait to see you in the next one, and I'll speak to you later. Peace.